5,000 fans are here to see the first big stock car race of 1934. Five popular makes have qualified. Chevrolet, Chrysler, Ford, Plymouth, and Rockney. Standard passenger cars minus fenders, windshields, and headlamps. Here are such aces as Louis Meyer, Pete DiPaolo, Fred Frame, Stubby Stubblefield, Al Gordon, and numerous other Speedway stars. And here's Art Pillsbury, 3A boss in the West, at the phone. The others are Harry Hartz, Cliff Durant, Art Vale, and Waldo Stein. The drivers go into a huddle for last-minute instructions. Harry Hartz gives Al Gordon a final word for the big race. And they're off. 27 stock cars in a 250-mile grind. It's a sight to thrill any race fan. It's going to be an afternoon of terrific punishment for cars and crews such as few drivers can remember. For this track is dynamite. It's short, less than two miles. 131 laps through dust, ruts, and wicked curves. In today's race, stamina counts as much as speed, and if you don't believe it, watch them. Look at those bumps. Imagine the strain on front axles, springs, shock absorbers, steering gears, wheels, and everything else, including the drivers and mechanics. And here's Herb Palmer in 22, a Chevrolet. There goes Bob Hahn in a Rockney. Look at number 10, Fred Frame's famous Ford, winner of the Elgin Road Race last fall. And there's Woody Woodford driving a Plymouth. He's all alone. No, he isn't. Rex Mays is after him in 21. Rex Mays is gaining. Rex Mays is going to take him, and he does take him. There's Tony Galati in his white Chrysler, the biggest car in the race, but the others don't seem to mind its size. In fact, they appear to like competition. How would you like to loan your car to one of those fellows? Remember, they have standard factory jobs just like you and I drive. Watch number seven. It's Jet Gardner. Boy, what chances he's taking. There are 768 curves in driving 131 laps around this course, each one packed with danger. Look at that dust. Here's where air cleaners come in handy. I wouldn't mind having one myself. Notice the right-hand curves. That's unusual for race courses. Most tracks are built like a plain saucer, but this one is shaped almost like a huge letter B with a straightaway in front of the main grandstand. The race is getting hot. Stubberfield in number eight is leading. Gordon in 15 is pressing him hard. Both are driving Fords and how they are driving it. Believe it or not, every one of those cars was completely torn down yesterday for 3A inspection. When those 3A boys conduct a stock car race, it is a stock car race. And I don't mean baby. Here comes number seven, driving like a madman to catch the leaders. Watch him skate around that curve. Boy, is he traveling. There he goes, number seven, overtaking 14. Now watch him on the right-hand turn. Boy, he almost lost his mechanic. Mile after mile, the boys push their cars recklessly in a dizzy duel for leadership. Both Gordon and Stubblefield are taking all the dangerous shortcuts. It's a fight for the stock car championship. If Stubby makes the slightest mistake, it will be Gordon's race, or maybe Pete DiPaolo's. Pete started in last place and has been gaining steadily. His number two is now running in third position. A smart driver is Baby Shoes Pete. Old-time drivers who have stopped at the pit say this is the toughest race they were ever in. Tough on cars, too. It takes a sturdy front axle to stand up under the punishment of those bumps. The car that can absorb that kind of treatment deserves to be stock car champion. This right-hand curve on the backstretch is one of the most dangerous spots on the course. They've plowed up 50 feet of earth between the track and infield to stop any car that skids too far. And now the drivers are beginning to smell the finish. Look at them go. It's a desperate fight with no quarter asked or given. No slowing down for ruts, curves, or dust. No time to think of danger. It's still Stubblefield, Gordon, and DiPaolo in cars 8, 15, and 2 leading the pack. They're strung out all around the course, and the race is almost over. There goes number 21. Here they come around that right-hand curve again. Boy, there's George Connors in number 14 and 99 with Al Reinke. And around the right-hand turn, they come once more. Look at all that dust. It's tough on those drivers going through that. And there's number two, Pete DiPaolo. And around they come. There's Stubby Stubblefield in number eight. And Fred Frame is after him. Ernie Triplett in number one. Rex Mays in 21. And Stubblefield again with 99 still after him. And Al Gordon chasing him. And there's Pete DiPaolo in number two, roaring along. And Stubblefield goes by once more in big eight. Watch for the blue flag. It means one more lap to go. Now it's the checkered flag to finish. And the winner is Stubblefield. 250 miles in four hours and 14 seconds.
Gordon only a few seconds behind. Congratulations, Stubby. Ken Ford takes the first 10 places. What a race and what an afternoon.